In this talk, I'd like to make some suggestions for how we can embed social innovation into the curriculum across the university or college. I'm not sure you agree, but uh, I'm not sure the idea of um, how can you be what you want to be was asked in the, in the olden days. Um, and if it was, it probably related to a specific profession. So um, if you wanted to be a farmer, scientist, banker or a baker, but the options were probably limited. So nowadays when we ask this question, how you can be what you want to be, uh, it's more than that. It relates to who you want to be as a person. So your identity, the impact you want to make, if you want to be a change maker and have positive impact on the world. So what this means is that if you're studying arts or engineering or health, you may also want to start a business. You want to become an entrepreneur. You want to become that change maker and positively contribute to the world. And what we know is that for the Generation Z, this is particularly important. So at CQ University, we believe that one way to ensure that the students have these opportunities is to embed social innovation into the curriculum. So before I get to my three suggestions, I thought I'll, I'll try to explain what embedding social innovation means, or, or how I understand these terms. So when I was planning this talk, I knew I was going to talk about embedding social innovation, so I decided to Google embedding. Maybe it wasn't a good idea, because um, when I uh, did this, because the reason I did this is because I use the term all the time, and it's in our strategy, the university strategy. Um, and I think I kind of know what it is. But when I Googled it, up came words like low dimensional spaces, mathematical structures, neural networks. These are words I can hardly pronounce. And then these are the images that came up. Yeah, they didn't really match. Um, wasn't really what I had in mind. Maybe that makes sense, maybe. But for me, embedding social innovations is more connected to a journalist being embedded in a military platoon. So they camouflaged, they're like one of the, the team, but participating in most of the things, not all of them, but they have a different agenda. And when we talk about social innovation, I think it's important to also recognize that social innovation is both a mindset and a process with a set of skills. So it's a mindset that's curious about the world, that believe that we can do things differently, that we can come up with new or novel ways to solve complex challenges. And to do that, of course, we need certain processes and we need certain skills. So what we mean when we talk about embedding social innovation is that we actually want the, we want the students to develop this mindset and we want them to have the confidence that they believe that they have a role to play in shaping theirs and humanity's future. And I think that by itself is a pretty good argument for embedding social innovation. Um, I could probably just stop there, but um, I will explain this a bit more. And maybe it does relate to that image that I showed before. Maybe it is that we want the mindset to trickle down into the networks of courses and units. But we also want it to be a bit like the journalist, to not, not stand out too much, not be too different, definitely not get shot. But how do we do this? So one way, of course, is to develop a social innovation unit, or a couple of units. And, and in these units, we talk about social change. We explain them the contribution social innovation can do. And in these units, we clarify that we don't have to continue with the way things are going. So if the way we do things are not actually sustainable, and if they are hurting our collective well-being, we can change and we can do something better. So in these units, we may ask students to go outside to work with the community organizations and collaboratively come up with new ways. But the thing is, the units like this are not always possible. Some courses are accredited, so they can't change. And some of them are just really full. They, they can't add something. Maybe the students um, pick different electives. So they think these electives will be more, they will be better for them in the future. Um, maybe they don't realize that the skills that are underpinning social innovation, 
are the skills that are linked to 21st century skills, or future work skills. And these are skills that many people are arguing are becoming more and more important. And they include creativity, problem solving, social intelligence, and so forth. So what do we do when this is the case? Or when we actually want to embed it into a unit as opposed to, or into a course as opposed to a unit over here? Well, we can't leave it to a course over here. Because I believe, and I think most practitioners out there believe that uh, social innovation is a transdisciplinary activity. So it's not disciplinary, interdisciplinary in the sense of disciplines working together. It's a group of people working together who are blending, morphing, twisting, and tweaking disciplines. And it's that kind of creative energy that is required to come up with something new. So we, we don't want it to be just in a school. We want to kind of invite everyone in. And that's um, also a reason why CQ University, as Australia's only Ashuka U changemaker campus, which means that we're part of an international network of universities and colleges that focuses on social innovation education. And, and we share that view that everyone can become a changemaker. So if that's the case, we, we need to take it out of the school and invite everyone in and make sure that the language is not stopping people. We can't use too technical a language. We can't use too disciplinary specific language. And then for, for someone like me who works for the Office of Social Innovations, I sit outside the schools and the faculties um, and trying to work with the faculty staff, the academics. It's also important that social innovation is seen to be, well, it's not seen as a threat to the discipline. We don't want to, we can't afford that nursing things that we're telling them how to educate or what to include, um, or podiatry or engineering. Instead, social innovation needs to be seen to be adding something to what we're doing. So the idea of seeing it as a mindset and a set of skills allows us to unpack a little bit and explore what it is that we can actually embed. And uh, I would make a suggestion that in order to embed social innovation, we need to ensure that students have the opportunity to explore three kind of core, broad skills. And these are participatory processes, systems thinking, and iterative design-driven approaches. And I know they're not very revolutionary, unexpected, um, but these are really fundamental or essential skills to have if you want to use social innovation to create social impact. And the best thing with these are that I don't think there's any school or any faculty or any discipline that would not be able to foster these within the students. So what do we mean by these? Participatory processes will enable students to develop a commitment and understanding about the importance to involving people who are facing social challenges, social disadvantage. And we refer to these as sometimes as people with lived experiences. And it's happening in courses, but it needs to happen across. And students need to be aware that this is the future and they should be ready. And participatory processes will develop the students' change-making attributes. And they will make them more comfortable to go outside and engage with people that are outside their disciplinary silos. So this is a foundational skill that is important for not just social innovation, but also social enterprises or any kind of um, interdisciplinary project work. And educators may then choose to draw from a number of different methods. It can be human-centered design. They might, might introduce a photo voice or something like word cafe, cafe, anything that brings people together and you can learn from them and understanding their experiences. Systems thinking. System thinking takes a macro perspective and tries to understand the systemic forces that impact social challenges. It's happening again in some disciplines, but it's not always focused on social issues. And in order to understand social issues, and then our role in them, and then the feedback loops that perpetuates the systems, system thinking is the key. And in a word that's, um, that's uh, interconnected, it's interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, and complex, the idea to be perceptive towards systems is a skill that every discipline should foster. 
to do this, uh, students may practice the map systems. They may unpack the sustainable development goals. They may create rich pictures or iceberg diagrams, anything that kind of clarifies the complexities and the connections within a system. Iterative design-driven approaches, these take an abductive logic to problem solving. And that means that they're prioritizing testing and prototyping to achieve the desired outcome. And design here is a, a verb. So it's an intentional activity that seeks to change a service or a process or an object or a thing into a more preferable one. And again, it's happening in some disciplines. People do it, but they don't realize always that it's something that needs to be practiced by doing. You need to make something. So students may draw from traditional design. They obviously do this. But also use visualization. Do use prototyping, mock-ups, create stuff. So when we're saying where we should embed these core skills into a course, it doesn't mean that we should cramp them into a unit. Or if you, if you do, then you become a social innovator. It means that we should sprinkle them through. We should make them part of what the students, how the students operate. They should become second nature. So they shouldn't just be practiced over here in some lab or hub. Instead, students should approach any teamwork or project informed by participatory processes. And they should be encouraged to have empathy for other worldviews and their own. And they should be ready to step outside and involve people in the projects. Students should approach any problem realizing there's many factors that will be influencing it. And they should be ready to look for root causes and understanding context. And students should, they shouldn't just jump into a solution. They should naturally apply a creative and iterative process to problem solving. And if students do this, they will then develop their change-making skills. And they will have a confidence in their own and in others' capabilities. And that will strengthen their social innovation mindset. And this will also set them up for a future, a future that will look quite different than today, and a future that will require us, all of us, to be more innovative together. And I think that is really what social innovation is about. And that is why it's a way to ensure that the students are able to be what they want to be when they graduate. Thank you.